your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 If you want to open your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we will get there in a few moments. As you've already heard and seen, Vacation Bible School was a great time. Workers did an outstanding job. The kids, incredible. Um, you know, and they heard the same thing that we try to preach every Sunday, um, lived out, is that uh, Jesus is our hope, that Jesus cares about us, that Jesus loves us. He can't love us anymore, and He can't love us any less. Man, there's, there's, there's somebody, we need to hear that. And we can't do anything more, to, we can't do anything to make God love us more, and we can't do anything to cause Him to love us less. He loves us. And... And He sent His Son Jesus to die for us so that we're, whatever we are, whatever's going on in our life, we don't have to fix it before we come to Jesus. We come to Jesus and He fixes it. He's, he's the fixer. He's the hope. He's the one that, that helps us. And those, those kids heard that message this week. And, and we get the joy of investing in them in that way. They, they were challenged, just as we've been challenged the last couple of weeks, to, to gear up, to get ready, and to get our game on. I mean, that, that there's, there's eternity in the balance. Do we understand that? that? That for some of your family and my family, that for some of our neighbors, that for some of our students that we're going to go back to class with in, in August, for, for folks we're going to meet when we head off to college, for those that we work with, for... For some of eternity is in the balance. And because of that, it is imperative that we get in the game. It's imperative that we don't coast any longer. It's imperative that we, we don't just come to church and go through the motions. It's imperative that this believer and that we as believers, that, that we get busy for the gospel, that we get in the game that we get to that place where we get our game on. First of all, you've got to make sure, this is what we looked at a couple weeks ago, do you have a relationship with Christ? Have you had a Damascus Road experience? Have you had a time in your life when you have realized you're lost, separated from God, and need Jesus to forgive you of your sins? That you need a relationship with with him. Paul didn't realize that headed to Damascus, but God got his attention. So has there been a time in your life that God's got your attention and made you realize that you need Jesus? And if so, did you respond to that and have you responded and do you know that Jesus is your Savior and heaven is your home? Can I tell you there's no greater peace, no greater hope, no greater joy than to know him than to know him. I'm sure that's not proper, but I'll make it work, all right? There's no greater joy in knowing that. Because of Jesus, I have joy and hope and peace. That, that no matter what this world throws at me, heaven is my home. All because of Jesus. He is my coach. He is my leader. He is my boss. And that what He desires of us, is once we become a part of His team, using that terminology, getting out of the stands, out of the stadium, and into the game. See, we left the decorations up because I wanted to preach to the masses again today. <laughs> but the truth is, is we have a message for the masses. We, we have the hope. We have joy. We have the answer to whatever it is the world is facing. And every one of those pictures of those folks in the stadium represents people that you and I can encounter and impact with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we've got to get in the game. We, we've, got to, we've got to get our game on. And so the challenge was understanding through the Scripture memory verse that the kids learned this week that by His divine power, He has granted to us or given to us everything that is required of us for life and godliness. 
through His Son, Jesus Christ. I mean, He has he given us everything. We have power in the name of Jesus. I mean, <laughs> oh, the enemy and his forces just shuddered at that, the name of Jesus. They can't stand it. We have power to do all things, whatever it is that he asks us to do. His provision is not just for these things and not just for this today and not just, oh, if you do this in three days, I'll do it. No, it's all things. That we might live a life of, of godliness and, and a life that draws people to the kingdom. So this passage in 1 Corinthians, Paul's writing, and to kind of give it a backdrop for us, it's, it's kind of an athletic backdrop uh, to what he is going to refer to in the passage that we're going to read. It was, it was written with the backdrop of their Isthmian games, or like our Olympics, for lack of a better, maybe just something to be equal to. It was something that was held every couple of years. It was held just outside the city of Corinth, and really about 10 miles outside the city of Corinth. These games brought people from every part of the region, many of them to compete in those games, others that would come and fill the stands to watch what was going to take place. The sporting event of all sporting events, just like Vacation Bible School is the, is the element in the life of our children and the opportunities to reach them was. These athletes would compete, and you, you name it, they would compete. There were foot races, broad jumping, discus throwing, wrestling, boxing, gymnastics, equestrian contest. Those are horses, in case you didn't know. All right. they, they, would, they would compete in all of these things. It was a fierce competition because each one wanted to win the prize. What do our Olympic athletes treasure? They, they, want, they want that medal, right? And, and you hear them say over and over again, we don't really care if it's gold, silver, or bronze. It's just the, the fact that I, that I would get a medal. They, they, they did all of this. They, went through, they had to prove that they had gone through 10 months of training before they could compete in these games. They had to show that they were serious about it. 300 days leading up to this in order to even be able to compete. And they, they competed for this Isthmian crown. It was a wreath of wild celery. That just sounds great, doesn't it? Like, boy, I got this wreath of celery. I don't even remember, I don't even like greens, you know? I mean, that's not even on my list. But here, they received a lifetime exemption from paying taxes. Aha, that would pique our interest a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah? They didn't have to serve in the military. They received free tuition at one of the universities. They'd have a statue of themselves made and placed along the route going from the city out to the arena where the events took place. But the real prize, all of those things were, were just added benefits, but the real prize was receiving this crown that showed I was the winner. And the truth is, we can't win the game. We can't win the prize if we don't get in the game. We can't do it. And so we've got to move from the stadium to the field. We've got to realize that there are people out there that need us to take a message of hope to them. And so again, will you choose today to get in the game? Listen to this passage of Scripture. In fact, stand with me as I read verses 19 through the end of the chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. Paul speaking, To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. Verse 21, To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. Verse 22, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. 
And I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessing. Let me pause just right there for a moment. Did you get the, the gist that once the Damascus Road experience happened in Paul's life, the single motivation that he had was to win people to Jesus? That's, that's what his motivation was, was to point them in the way of the light that had changed his life. And he's not doing it to gain a name for himself. He's not doing it to, to, to grow any particular group of believers of which he's a part of, where he travels to. He is doing it, it says, for the sake of the gospel that I might share with them in its blessing. And then listen, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you might obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things, and they do it to receive a perishable wreath. But listen, we do what we do for an imperishable wreath. He says in verse 26, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one that beats the air. But I discipline my body. I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself would be disqualified father this morning would you help us to choose to get our game on in such a way that father we are making a difference for you with our lives in jesus name i pray amen in those last few verses do you not know that in a race all the runners run folks we're in a race we're out of the stadium and we're in the game we are in the game we are running a race we are, we've got to keep moving, run in such a way as to get the prize. Here's the difference. They're fighting and they're running and they're trying to get this imperishable crown or this, this crown that will pass away. That's what perishable means. We are running, understanding that because of our relationship with Christ, when we get to the end, we will receive a crown that is imperishable. We will receive a crown that we'll be able to, to lay at His feet the victor's crown. As we finish our race for Him, we got to get in the game. we got to keep running. we got to get ready. He says, don't you know that every athlete exercises self-control in all things? That means they go into strict training. That means a pushback on, well, we're not going there, all right? We're just going to, no, we just, i got to push back on the, the sweet tea, and i got to only eat one piece of cake instead of two, or whatever it may be, or I've got I've to get the weights out. If you all were here for Bible school and saw Larry trying to lift the buckets in the weights, you know that he needs a little bit more uh, efforts in the strict training side of things in order to get things going. But whether it's physically, I'm going to almost trip on that, but I'm, I'm all right. And uh, i got my knee brace on for any that are concerned, and uh, we'll be all right. But we've got to go into training. That's what he says they do. And they get focused. They do it to win a crown. And we do it because we've received a crown that will last forever. We get energy from it in that sense. We don't run around aimlessly. There is purpose and there is focus. There is direction in our lives. We're not just going out and he goes on to say, I don't run and fight. I don't run like a man running aimlessly and I don't fight like a man beating in the air. I don't just go out as one boxing and beating the air and just kind of doing this kind of thing. There is, there is purpose and there is focus. There is energy in what I do. And, and I never quit. That's what he says. But I discipline my body and I keep it under control. Some translations say, I beat my body and I make it my slave. I, I discipline myself. So I realize that, that I don't want to do anything that would push people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that when I preach to others, they might not have to look at my life and see that I have done something that they wouldn't hear the words that I had shared with them. We talk a lot about building bridges of relationship here at the church. And we need to build bridges of relationship that are strong enough to bear the weight of the testimony that we want to share. We want to talk to somebody about the love of Jesus and the hope that He can offer them. We need to live in such a way and talk and act in such a way that when we get the opportunity to share with them, they'll want to listen 
to what we have to say. Because what they're hearing from us is not any different than what they see in us. Paul says, I don't want to live my life in such a way that I might proclaim one thing and push people another way by the way that I act. When we get in the game, here's, here's some things I believe happen for us. In light of what he says to them about getting ready and going into strict training and getting focused and getting a crown that will last forever, energized, running like a man that's running aimlessly, not doing that, and being fruitful, not fighting like one just throwing his arms up in the air, but there's, there's purpose and there's focus. Here's what happens. When we get our game on and we get in the game, we will get stronger spiritually. What does it mean? When I choose to spend time with God, when I choose to open His book and I read it, and when I choose to meditate on it, that I would ponder it and picture it and pray it through. When I, when I get into His Word, when I study it, when I choose to memorize His Word, Father, I've hidden Your Word in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. God, I, I, want, I want to know Your truth. When, when, I, when I get in the game and I take it seriously and I go into that strict training to get ready for it, I'm going to get stronger spiritually so that I can stand up against the fiery darts of the wicked one. And having done all, I can stand. Guess what? I don't stand in my own strength. I stand in the strength and the power of the one who has given me all things that I need to be able to live a life of godliness and holiness. I get stronger spiritually when I choose to be a part of a small group or a Sunday school class, a group where we can just iron sharpen iron, where we can take God's Word and cut it apart and look at it and, and figure out how to apply it to our lives. We get stronger spiritually by being in the game, by coming to places like this, corporate worship times. where We get to be fed God's Word. We get to worship Him through song and through giving and through prayer and through all of those means. See, the idea is, is we get stronger spiritually when we're in the game because we're putting the right stuff in so that when we get pressure and when the, the challenges come and we go in, the right stuff comes out. But getting in the game and getting our game on, going into this strict training as Paul speaks of in this passage, will help us get strong spiritually. But the second thing it'll do, it'll also strengthen the ministry of the church. That, that's what'll happen. You could go back and, and begin to read, when we choose to serve the Lord by serving others. So this, this maybe moves us from just attending a small group class like Sunday school or a Bible study class to saying, hey, I, I'll lead one of those. I'll, I'll facilitate that class. I'll take a group of men through this study or a group of ladies through this study. I'll, I'll, I'll help in that regard. I'll give an hour or two a month of my life to help with preschool or children age kids or maybe in our youth department I'll, I'll get involved in the men's ministry or women's ministry of our church I'll consider given that time to get involved in the pre-chow that we're getting ready to launch in August for those kids that are kindergarten and under four or five in kindergarten and we're going to invest in them more specifically I'll I'll give an hour every two months of my life and help in the Paw Patrol time, which is for even those younger kids during the worship service. I'd, I'd consider getting involved in, in the chow time, our children's hour of worship for our first through fifth grade kids starting in August. I mean, it's ongoing. We're just changing the dynamics of it, moving a pre-chow downstairs and extending what we offer. I can plan that all I want to, but it takes folks choosing to get in the game and letting them be used to strengthen the ministry of the church for it to happen. I'll help with those little ones on Wednesday nights, maybe even a little bit bigger ones on Wednesday nights. Getting in the game and strengthening the ministry of the church happens when we make a decision to get involved. We have a reach ministry. We've kind of taken a, a, a July 
hibernation or whatever you might call it, hiatus, where we, we've just been busy with different things, but the reach ministry to, to contact folks that have been missing and, and just praying for folks and checking on them and visiting visitors and all those kind of things. We could get involved in once a month for an hour a month. I could do that. In fact, Lord may be even pressing on me that, that I need to go talk to the pastor about maybe even being one of the leaders of that. I don't know, but I know God wants you in his game. And I know that when you get in the game and you get serious with him in the strict training that you will get stronger spiritually. And as you grow stronger spiritually, you'll be drawn to get involved in ministry that strengthens the ministry of our church. Because it's all about using our gifts and our talents for him because he has gifted you for his purposes. The third thing that will happen when we get in the game and we, we take on this mode of, of doing these things and going into strict training and understanding what we're striving for is that we will also strengthen our kingdom impact in our community. Because our reach will not only be an in-reach in which we take care of and do ministry of folks that come here, but we will also be out in the community reaching them where they are are with what's going on in their life so that when the when the church schedules another serve glenpool day and we go out in the community to serve we'll have half of the church involved in that or more when we do our back to school appreciation dinner here in just a matter of a few weeks we'll continue to be involved in that when we do the christmas shop and help head that up in december we'll be involved in that We'll be making sure that that happens because it's a way that we impact our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We do those things within our community again to build that bridge so that when those folks are in need and they come and they say, hey, can you help me with this? What's going on here and what's going on there? And we begin to share with them the love of Christ and what He can do in their life. Our testimony, that bridge is strong enough to bear the weight of the testimony that we're ready to share because we realize we're in a game a game that matters for eternity for some people and we want to make a difference with our kingdom impact in our community man there's so many things we we talk about mercy mission and the food and clothing there's ways to volunteer and and to help over there we have a medical clinic that comes a couple of times a month that you can go and get involved in you don't have to be the doctor or the nurse just be somebody that would be there that would pray with those folks and just visit with them while they're waiting to be seen by the doctor opportunities to do kingdom impact ministry see God use you as you get in the game he'll strengthen your spiritual life will strengthen the ministry of the church which will strengthen our impact in our community and all along the way we will see God use you and I to grow his team we will see more and more folks when we grow when we share when we serve God brings the growth to the team read the book of Acts you will see on a occasion after occasion God is the one that adds to the number on a regular basis. He does it in Acts chapter 2 before Paul comes into the picture. He does it in Acts chapter 16 when he pulls Timothy to go along with him on the missionary journeys and it says in chapter 16 and verse 4 and God added to their numbers daily. God grows the team when you and I choose to get out of the stadium and into the game and we begin to do what he's called us to do. Strengthen ourselves, serve within the body life of the church, and spread the gospel outside the walls of the church. When we do those things, he will bring the growth. We are a church driven by a commitment to make disciples that makes disciples. Motivated to do so by our love for God and our love for others. Focused with a passion to be witnesses for him wherever we go and purposed to function well to be a witness for him and to serve him wherever we go are you willing to make the choice to make the most of the game that we're in are you willing
If you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord, man, I can beg you all I want to. The greatest decision I ever made in my life was accepting Christ as my Savior and Lord. I didn't fully understand it then, but I can tell you that's the truth today. If you've never made that decision, oh, please, I beg of you, consider that today. No single more important decision you'll ever make than that one right there. And then when you make that choice to get in the game, let God use you to make a difference for His kingdom. That's what He wants to do. Strengthen, serve, and share. Let's stand together.